Hello, welcome all. Welcome to my topic circuits and networks. I am Ravi Kant and today we are going to deal with basics of circuits and networks. Apart from that, we will look into the power calculations using node analysis and mesh analysis. So we will start with the basics of circuits and networks. Current, voltage, power, resistance, etc. These are the basic parameters which come across circuits and networks. Let us start with the current. Current, technically, it is defined as the rate of flow of electrons. Here, charge of electron is minus 1.6 into 10 to the power of minus 19 coulombs. Mathematically, it can be given as I is equal to TQ by TT. So, the units will be coulombs per second or you can take the unit as an ampere. This is a figure when you can see the flow of electrons and the current direction moving from positive to negative. I is treated as conventional current and generally it is used in circuits and networks. An external force called as an electromotive force is required to move electrons from one point to another. It is also defined as voltage. Mathematically, V is equal to dW by dQ. The units will be joules per coulomb or you can take the unit to be as volts. The time rate of energy is called as power. So P is equal to dW by dt. The units will be joules per second or you can take the unit to be a watt. So power can be expressed in terms of voltage as dW by dQ and in terms of current as dQ by dt. So power P is equal to V into I. This is a formula we generally come across in our text or when we are going to calculate the power through a particular element. When current is entering at the positive terminal of the voltage, then voltage element is absorbing power. Here you can see the direction of current, it is coming towards the voltage. So this type of power is called as absorbing power. You can look into this circuit or this circuit. Here it is called as voltage or a battery. And when you see a circle with plus and minus, then it indicates DC source voltage. When current is leaving the positive terminal of the voltage, then the voltage element is delivering the power. So you can see the diagram of the delivering power. You have a positive symbol here, negative symbol downward direction and the current it is moving away from the positive terminal. If this is the condition, then we treat the power to be delivered to the particular network. This is another way of looking into the network and here you can see there is a current source which is ready to deliver the power. So the voltage measured will be across these two terminals and this current is nothing but our the conventional current or you can take this to be a source current. Let us look at the examples for power absorbing and power delivering. We will start with example 1. Here you can see at 10 amperes it is coming into 12 volts. So here the power developed in 12 volts is equal to the power absorbed whose value is nothing but 120 watts. If P power developed in 12 volts is 120 watts then power delivered is equal to minus 120 watts. Let us go with another example. Here you can see there is a 4 volts of DC voltage and 2 amperes it is moving away from the positive terminal. So here we will treat the power to be power delivered and the value is nothing but 8 watts. If 8 watts is the power delivered, then it is understood that power absorbed will be minus 8 watts. In example 3, you can see a 6 volts source voltage is there and you can see a current of minus 12 amperes. It is entering towards the positive plate. So here, 6 volts of power absorbed will be minus 72 watts. And the power delivered will be quite opposite to this that is 72 watts. In example 4 you can see minus 3 amperes it is coming to the negative terminal of the source voltage. So it is understood that here also the value of power developed is nothing but it is the power delivered. So the developed power is delivered power whose value is minus 6 watts then the power absorbed value will be positive 6 watts. And another example you can see we need to find out the power in 3 amperes, the current 3 amperes. In that we need to find out the power. So the power delivered value will be 12 watts. 
So these are the basics of power absorbed and power delivered, what we have seen from example 1 to example 5. Let us solve a typical network. Here you can see there is a network which is having composed of resistors, voltage sources and current. So we need to find out the power delivered by 1 ampere current source. So this is a current source that is 1 ampere here. So let us apply node analysis to get the answer and later on we will apply mesh analysis to cross check our answer. So we need to find out the power developed or delivered at 1 ampere. So this is the condition what in which we need to satisfy. So for node analysis I am identifying the reference node. I am treating as a zero voltage the center node. I am taking the voltages of other nodes as V1, V2, V3, V4. Now I have four nodes and one center node. Total we have five nodes with one node as reference node. So we have to apply KCL to obtain the node equations and after obtaining the node equations we will try to estimate the voltage which is going to be developed between V3 and V4 because we need to find out the power in 1 ampere. So this is the diagram and the analysis what we have done. So we are applying KCL at this node 4 we are going to apply KCL treating node 4 to be the dominating node. So you will have V4 minus V1 minus 5 whole divided by 1 this is the branch current which is flowing in this particular branch which is in between node 4 and node 1. By clear inspection you can see here V1 and with the reference 0 you have minus 2 volts. So it is understood that the value of V1 is minus 2 volts. So we will treat this one as equation 1 and we are going to apply this V1 value over here. So it will be V4 plus 2 minus y by 1 plus V4 by 1. This is V4 minus 0 by 1 that is what is this V4 by 1 plus 1 because the current here source current it is leaving the node 4 that is why it is plus 1 it is equal to 0. So with this we will get the value of V4 as 1 volt. Let us make this as equation 2. Now we are going to apply KCL at node 2. This is a node 2 point. So you can see this node point is having three branches here. So V2 minus V3 plus 2. So V2 minus V3. Here you have positive symbol that's why it is plus 2. Whole divided by 2. So that is the branch current between node 2 and node 3. Another branch current between node 2 and reference node you have V2 by 1. And another branch between node 2 and 1 you have V2 minus V1 by 1 equal to 0. So simplifying this equation by substituting the value of V1 wherever it is required, we are going to get 5 V2 minus V3 equal to minus 6 volts. I am taking this particular equation as equation 3. Now I am going to concentrate on the next node. So applying KCL at node 3. Now at this node I am going to apply KCL. So how many branches are there? Three branches are there. So naturally three parameters are going to come in this particular equation. So first branch current it is V3 minus V2 minus 2 because minus is on towards node 2 direction that is why it is minus 2 whole divided by 2. It becomes one branch current. Another branch current you have between node 3 and 0. So that is V3 minus 0 by 2 and you can see the current source it is De delivering the power into the node 3. So minus 1 ampere it is taken as a branch current directly from the given circuit diagram. So that is what we have substituted here and we have made it equation 4. So from equation 1 to 4 we have these 4 equations. Already we have obtained the value of V1 and V4. Now let us simplify equation 3, equation 4 to get the value of V2 which we got as minus 8 by 9 volts and V3 which is 14 by 9 volts. So equation 5 and equation 6 we have obtained the value of V2 and V3. So now we have all the node voltages. So we need to find out the voltage between node 3 and node 4 which is nothing but V3 minus V4. V3 minus V4 is the node voltage present between node 3 and node 4. So this is a voltage here. So we are going to substitute the values of V3 which is 14 by 9 and V4 we got the value as 1. So 14 by 9 minus 1 
which gives the answer to be 5 by 9. So this is the value of the voltage which is developed over here. So you have voltage here, you have current here. We will follow the formula for power. Power is equal to V into I. So we are substituting the value of V. We are substituting the value of I which is equal to 5 by 9 watts. So this is how we calculate the power. And here in this case the delivering power which is developed across 1 ampere current source. The same problem we are going to check out with mesh equations. So these are the four meshes. So the four meshes are giving four current I1, I2, I3 and I4. So after assuming the directions of the current in clockwise direction, I'm applying KVL to obtain the equations. So I'm applying KVL for the mesh one. I'm going to start off with I1, which is one ohm. One into I1 is I1. Then you have one shared by I1 and I2. So one I1 minus I2 plus 2 equal to 0 plus 2 on the path we are going to take the voltage as it is it equal to 0. So this simplification gives you the answer as 2 I1 minus I2 equal to minus 2. This again I am treating as equation 1 and applying KVL to mesh 2. So applying KVL to mesh 2 we are starting with 2, 2 I2 and on the path minus 2 volts is there so minus 2 plus you can see there is a 2 over here and you have current I2 as loop current second loop and you have loop current I4 so I2 minus I4 so 2 into I2 minus I4 plus you're going to come across 1 which is placed between loop 2 and loop 1 so dominating loop is loop 2 now so I2 minus I1 equal to 0 this further simplification gives you the second equation as minus I1 plus 5 I2 minus 2 I4 equal to 2 now applying the mesh analysis for loop 3 I'm starting with minus 2 volts, minus 2 plus you have 1 over here, so I3 minus I4 plus 5. On the path, I'm taking taking the value of the voltage which is given as positive 5 volts, so positive 5 plus 1 into I3 equal to 0. So this gives us the equation 3, which is 2I3 minus I4 equal to minus 3. Now I4, by clear inspection, you can see we have taken the direction of I4 which is acting opposite to the given source current. So source current is 1 ampere and then loop 4, this branch current will become as a loop current whose value is nothing but I4 is equal to minus 1 ampere. So I4 is equal to minus 1 ampere, I'm taking as equation 4. So from 3 and equation 4, I can get the value of I3 which is nothing but equal to minus 2 amperes. Just I'm substituting the value of equation 4 and equation 3. So I'm getting the value of I3 as minus 2 amperes. Now substituting the equation 4 in equation 2 that is in this equation so I'm going to get the value of I1 as 5I2 I'm taking this as equation 6 and now I'm substituting this equation 6 in equation 1 so with this I'll get the value of I2 which is equal to minus 2 by 9 amperes once I get the value of I2 as minus 2 by 9 amperes I can get the value of I1 as minus 10 by 9 amperes so with this mesh analysis I got the value of voltage drop over this particular branch and over this particular branch which is 1 and 2 ohms you can see the direction of the voltages which are already developed here because of the flowing current directions which we have chosen and this is the source current which is flowing from this point to this point so this is the developed voltage across these two points now we'll apply KVL to this particular loop, loop 4 will apply KVL to get the answer for voltage which is supposed to get developed in 1 ampere. So you can see here minus plus on the path I am applying the KVL. So minus is in downward direction, plus is in upper direction. So minus V1 ohms. Then you have minus on this direction, plus on these directions. So minus V of 2 ohms plus V of 1 ampere is equal to 0. So I'm substituting the value as it is. I have the resistance as 1 ohm and it is started with minus. So minus 1. I3 minus I4 was the current which was developed because of this particular loop. I3 minus I4 which was the current which is developed in this particular loop. That current multiplied with the resistance will give you the voltage. That is the voltage across 1 ohm. And similarly we are going to apply the same analysis. You have minus 2 that is the resistance value and you have I2 minus I4 that is the developed current which is in this particular branch already we have made it to flow in this directions so the developed voltage is obtained across 2 ohms in this fashion and then the new value which we are supposed to obtain across 1 ampere that is 
positive on this side, negative on this side. So this is V of 1 ampere, which is equal to 0 with this. And equations which we have already derived, that is I4 is minus 1 ampere, I3 is minus 2 amperes, and I2 is minus 2 by 9 amperes. We'll apply all these loop currents in this particular equation to obtain the value of V1 ampere, which is nothing but 14 by 9 minus 1, which gives the value as Y by 9. So you can see, again, we got the value of voltage as Y by 9 only. So this time we have obtained this answer using mesh analysis. So we can apply the formula for power, which is nothing but power is equal to V into Y. V is just, we got the value as Y by 9 into the 1 ampere is a source current value. So this gives the value as Y by 9 watts. If you like my video, please like it, share it and subscribe it among your friends and press the bell icon for future notifications. Thank you.